Hello, everyone. I hope you're having a great day. I know I am, and I think this next, these next two sessions are going to be great. We get to meet some of our incredible students, which is always the highlight, and of course have our talk with Dean Megan Rabine. Um, so yes, I'm Julie DeMonco, so I'm D Douglas College, class of 1983, <laughs> and the chair of the um, advisory board here at Douglas. And it's my great pleasure today to be the person who gets to introduce to you Dean Megan Rabine, the 11th Dean of Douglas College. Um, she's had that role since July of 2022. Um, Dr. Rabine joined Douglas in 2018, serving uh, most recently before becoming Dean as Associate Dean for Strategic Initiatives, where she developed new opportunities for collaboration with a special focus on communications and sustainability. Prior to that, she led the record-breaking conclusion of the highly successful Power of 100 Years fundraising campaign on behalf of Douglas. Before she came to Douglas, she served as Vice President for Institutional Advancement at Georgian Court University. She has a bachelor's degree from Hampshire College, a master's degree from Sacred Heart University, and a doctoral degree in education from Stockton University. Dr. Rabine has more than two decades of experience in nonprofit leadership, higher education, and health and human services organizations. Her research focuses on gender and leadership development in the nonprofit sector. So that was all obviously on script, and now I'm going to go off script. Because while everything I just said is accurate, um, but it, it's a bit um, generalizing and definitely too modest because the truth is that from the day Megan arrived at Douglas, she's been involved in every single important initiative, issue problem solving, program planning, strategic planning, every little bit Megan has had a hand, a significant hand in. And that was true when she was um, Dean Jackie Litt's second in command, and it's even more true now that she is Dean in her own right. Um, she has impressed everybody that she's worked with. And it doesn't matter that she's impressed me, although she has. It matters that she impressed the chancellor, because the chancellor ran a nationwide search for the next dean of Douglas College. And that search produced many high-level candidates. And of all those candidates, the chancellor chose <laughs> Megan to be the next dean of Douglas College. And we're so excited about that and obviously thrilled because she's already blazing new trails for Douglas. It's so important that we have a strong leader like Dean Megan Rabine at Douglas because, as we all know, women still face <laughs> tremendous barriers to equity and fairness in the world, in every aspect of the world. And so the importance of Douglas is as strong as ever, and we need someone like Dean Rabine to move us forward. So we're lucky to have her. When I think about Dean Rabine, two characteristics come to mind. Um, effectiveness and diplomacy. She gets the job done, whether it's starting a new program or resolving a conflict or thinking about the future of Douglas and putting that in motion, she makes it happen. And um, one of the ways she does that is with her tremendous collaboration skills. And a good example of that is the way she's working with all the deans all over the New Brunswick campus to come up with shared programs and shared successes that will only continue to advance Douglas College and her students. And it's the diplomacy that helps make her so effective because she has just got this reassuring, calm style that everybody responds to. And so she's just a wonderful partner working for Douglas. The last thing I'll say about her before I invite her to come up here is I was thinking about um, the student perspective. And of course, at the end of the day, the students are the most important part of Douglas, what matters the most. And I was thinking that if I was a student here again, and I had a problem. Maybe I was having difficulties with my studies, or I had a personal issue, or maybe I had a great idea that would make Douglas a better living learning community. I can't think of a better person as Dean to go to than Megan. She's warm, she's welcoming, and she's committed to the students and to Douglas. And so I think she's a tremendous asset for the university and for, especially for the students of Douglas. So with all that said, I would like to invite Dean Megan Rabine up to the stage. This is the second time Julie's introduced me, and I, I told her then, and I'll say again, you need to come every day and do that every day. 
Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming on a really beautiful day when you could be doing other things, particularly you. It's midterm season. You could be doing other things. So I really appreciate you taking the time to come and join us. I have a script as well. I'm going to stick sort of to the script, but I think some of the best conversations we have are the ones that happen in the in-between. So Julie introduced me. I'm going to introduce these fabulous students to you, and then we'll get into a conversation. So Loria Hall is a senior economics major and math minor. She participates in the bunting program for non-traditional students, is co-chairperson of the Beehive, any Beehive, former Beehive out there, uh, and is the mother to an incredible seven-year-old, which is probably the hardest thing that you do. <laughs> Dravita Patel is a junior computer science and data science major with a statistics track. I met Dravita last year in my knowledge and power se section, and Dravita's amazing. She's a member, uh, she's a co-chair of the Douglas Traditional Events Committee and a member of the computer science living learning community. Rachel Perez is a senior pursuing dual majors in philosophy and Spanish minoring in women's and gender studies, and she serves as the retention chair for the Latino Student Council, is founding president of the Rutgers Union of Cuban American Students, and recently traveled to Kuwait as part of the Douglas Global Leaders Program. So definitely check in with Rachel about that experience. Mini Sinha is a double major, computer science and cognitive science with a minor in mathematics. So you had some midterms. <laughs> she participated in Douglas's undergraduate research program, Project Super, attended the Women in Data Science Conference at Stanford University as part of Douglas Wise programming, and is a Douglas diversity ambassador, which is no small undertaking. Katie Lynch is a senior biomedical engineering major who serves as engineering student body president and president of RU Indigenous. She's a member of the Riley Douglas Engineering Living Learning Community and also participated in Douglas's Project Super program. And Virginia Yui Heira is a senior sociology major and music minor, as well as an undergraduate associate at the Eagleton Institute for Politics. She's part of the articulated BA MPH, so minors in public, uh, masters in public health, right? Uh, and is pursuing that master's in health systems and health policy. So we need you. <laughs> Please join me in a round of applause and welcome the students, and we'll get into some questions. So my first question for all of you, we're gonna start chronologically. How did you find Douglas? And why are you here? What, what prompted you to say yes? Uh, Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was like the opportunities that, um, like, that I've heard from Douglas. Like, I came to the open house um, back in 2021. And I remember just hearing that, like, they give, like, they give funding for events and everything. And I remember going for the, I think it was for the STEM one too, and they were talking about all the benefits for the CSLLC. And I remember they were offering a free blanket if you signed up. <laughs> <laughs> the blanket's a big deal. Anybody else get a blanket? Yeah. <laughs> I can go next. So I first heard about Douglas, I'm a transfer student. So I'm a senior, but this is only my second year at Rutgers. And when I was going through the transfer process and you know learning about all of the things that Rutgers has to offer in a shorter time span, because I'm entering as a junior, actually one of my professors from my last school, her daughter was in Douglas at the time. And so when I told her that I was transferring to Rutgers, she really kind of introduced me to everything that Douglas has to offer. And then like some of the other panelists, I attended one of the open houses. This was February of 2022, so still a little in COVID, so everything that I did was online. 
And then I was able to come to all of the welcome events in person, which I heard was like one of the first in-person things coming back from COVID, which was really exciting to see, you know, all of the staff and all of the current students who were so excited to just be together again. That was one of the things that really drew me in as, especially someone who was new to the Rutgers community, not just to the Douglas community. Um, I would say piggybacking off of what you said, I was also a transfer student. And so um, when I was going through the application process right before I formally applied to Rutgers, I was just browsing on the internet just to see, you know, because it, 2020 is when I was applying, so it was COVID. <laughs> um, and I ran across Douglas, but I also ran across the Bunting program which you know, helps you know, non-traditional students, and I'm a mother, so I was really intrigued. And growing up, um, like all of my friends, they ended up dropping out of college, and so I don't have anyone, I don't have a community of women who are non-traditional and also a mom, and so it really intrigued me to um, get involved in a community where there was other women who have a similar story and who could also empower me to keep going. I guess for me, I would say, um, I always say Douglas chose me because um, honestly, I didn't look for Douglas and I remember my professors in high school, they were like, don't go, don't go to Douglas, don't do women and gender studies. And I took knowledge and power. And right now I feel like, like my identity is because of knowledge and power, like because of that class, I wear my Afro, I founded my organization. And so, yeah, I feel like Douglas was like, yeah, you need to come here and you need to be a Douglas woman. So yeah, for me it was just that class, knowledge and power and how powerful was the whole, like the movement and the, um, like the identity and all of that, like seeing all of those, women professors, it was so powerful that I had to be here with this um, community. So um, I joined when COVID was happening and so in 2020, and I first heard about Douglas through an email and um, all it said was, join Douglas, you're also gonna be we're, working. We're very, you know, <laughs> fancy in our yes. language. Yes. <laughs> Um, so yeah, and I saw the amazing opportunities that they were offering all these wo um, women in, um, and at the time I was pre-med, and so I was looking especially at the research opportunities and STEM opportunities, and I just thought that I would join. I, I didn't think the, as much, I would do as much as that I, I have had um, when I first joined Douglas, which is amazing. Yeah, so I found Douglas through like a postcard in the mail. <laughs> um, so it was, this was 2020. So um, yeah, right as I was like deciding, I got a postcard from Douglas in the mail and I was like, what's this? <laughs> um, which prompted me to kind of do a little bit more research. But I think for me, it really boils down to finding community here. Um, as a woman in engineering, as an indigenous woman in engineering, I make up about 0.2% of engineers in the world. Um, so it can feel a little bit lonely sometimes, but I really found people at Douglas that made me like find um, really community and a space to really like highlight my identity um, in engineering, but also a really interesting interdisciplinary academic environment. Um, engineering classes are a lot. <laughs> so the ability to really take a step back and think about not only knowledge and power, but also the other classes that I've taken um, that are Douglas involves really gave me the opportunity to step out of STEM um, and embrace a little bit more of the like holistic aspect of like not only science in a lab setting, but like how does science impact people um, and how do people's identities play into their roles in scientists and engineers. So yeah, that's definitely why I said yes. <laughs> so you've had incredibly varied experiences at Douglas in the time that you've been here. Um, what, what's the program? So you said knowledge and power, right? What's the program that if you had to pick one thing that has had the single largest impact on your time at Douglas? Rachel, if you want to go first, because you know you might know what yours is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I'm really involved in Douglas, honestly, but I feel like 
the Global Leaders Program. Um, I went to Kuwait and we had to take a class about decolonizing um, global learning and uh, like the human crisis. But actually going to Kuwait and like see the human crisis, but also like the, I don't know, like the, the I don't know how to say, but like the power that these people are trying to um, like fix the issues like within the population and like, but it's so different looking at the whole situation from a um, feminist perspective. And so when we came back, we were like discussing what we learned um, during the trip, but also we were like, we need to teach here in US whatever is happening there, but also highlight that here in US we have the same issues, even though we don't wanna look at them. And so we wanna point out other like nations. And now we're working on publishing this article. And I feel like for me, that's really powerful to go to like, I don't know, hundreds of students that are all in that course together, whereas we had a synchronous course with a female professor who's the chair of the chemical engineering department. So this was like 20 students. It was on Zoom every week, and it really gave us the opportunity to build community with each other in a really difficult time. Um, I met my roommate through the Douglas Engineering Living Learning Community. We've been living together for three years now. <laughs> um, and I also did get the opportunity to meet Mr. Riley at the School of Engineering Medal of Excellence event uh, two years in a row, last year and this year. Um, so to meet him and to introduce him to my roommate, who's my rock and my best friend, um, and really be able to articulate to him how much that community has meant to me was really incredible. Um, and it's always something that I talk about when I talk about Douglas, because it's so quintessentially Douglas community. No matter where you are on Bush campus or around the university, you, you see a fellow Delk woman and you know that you have someone in your corner. Um, so I think that's part of the beauty of Douglas and the living learning communities. I can also piggyback on that, not that one, but um, the computer science LLC, um, which I first joined when I first joined Douglas, um, it was also completely online. And if I'm being honest, I wasn't sure what I was getting myself into. It was just more like a community, a Zoom community at the time of just other women in computer science. And um, I'm, I think it was one of the most um, significant 
programs that I joined at Douglas because it um, really opened my eyes to just how little women are are there there are in computer science and opened up doors to allow me to go to conferences such as Grace Hopper, which is one of the biggest um, all women in on gender minority conferences for women in tech for people in tech, and um, just allowing me to learn about um, the impact that I'm having just as a fellow um, woman in CS, and just about the impact that other women are having, and I'm feeling very inspired, definitely. Um, want to pursue that kind of work after I graduate and after I start working and kind of go into um, the workforce also trying to um, open more doors for more women and not um, gender minorities to join the computer science since only about a third of the industry is um, women, which is pretty insane. Yeah. Um, I would definitely say for me, I would say the Bunting program. Um, I remember the fall semester when I started, um, I saw a flyer for um, an event and I was like, okay, let me go to this event. And um, so I attended the event and I met other non-traditional women. Um, and I also met some of the faculty that works at the Douglas College and that her name is Medina. You guys may know her. Hey, <laughs> and I, <laughs> yeah. And I've been in contact with Medina ever since. I always say that that one single event changed my whole experience here at Rutgers. Um, and so, like, we have a group chat, and you know, we're in the group chat and sharing information with each other, reminding each other, like, hey, you know, you guys, we can you know, have early registration for classes, or, you know, did you take this professor? Does anyone have experience with this class? And so it's just such a tight-knit community, and I'm just, like, so grateful for the experience. I don't, I honestly think, like, I don't know what I would have done without that community. Um, and then also, it can feel a little lonely sometimes. Like, I'm also a commuter student, so, like, you know, I come to school, that comes here just for a short amount of time, then I have to, I'm, I'm also a super commuter. I live in New York City. <laughs> so, I, <laughs> so I travel here from New York. And then, you know, sometimes in between classes, I remember that first semester, I was like, you know, I wanna make friends. It feels a little lonely. And I remember going into the chat and saying, hey, is anyone available to meet up with me today for lunch? And I got a few women like, hey, yeah, let's meet up on the Douglas campus in the lounge. <laughs> and so um, it just, it feels really good. You know, it feels really good to be a part of a community where I know that, um, you know, if I'm going through anything, I have a, a faculty member I can reach out to. I also have other students that I can reach out to, other students with kids. So they're like, yeah, girl, I know. I know what you're feeling. <laughs> I, 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 listen, I was going through that last semester. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's been very instrumental for me. Um, I would say for me, it'd be the computer science LLC as well. Um, I, it has given me like a lot of opportunities. I was able to do Project Super after my freshman year. And so I was like analyzing like co-location data and I feel like I don't really get those type of experiences in my class. I also was just came back like two weeks ago from Grace Hopper, and that was completely sponsored by uh, um, the Douglas, and it was organized by Dr. B, who is the director of the CSLLC. And despite its issues with the Grace Hopper, it was really well like put together. We, like we felt like everything was like good, and I also felt like I met like a lot of my friends there. Um, I'm also a commuter, and during my freshman year, they had it so that they would allow commuters into the LLC. And a lot of the girls I still talk to today are from the LLC and we have like, we take classes together and we just like tend to just share experience and help each other find internships. So Trivita is referring, the Grace Hopper
I feel like for me, it's like Douglas has given me a lot of like confidence. Before like college, I was very nervous. I would not speak up. I was very shy. I feel that like through the programs and I've gone to a lot of like the career, um, career, um, the career fair and everything that Douglas offers, like the most common advice is just be very confident. Like you need to show that you belong there and that like imposter syndrome is, tr is real, but you are doing your best and you do deserve like the opportunities that everyone else is giving. Okay. Yeah, I think Douglas really gives you agency. Um, I was the only Native student in my high school. I'm the only Native student that I know of in the School of Engineering. Um, so being in spaces like that, it's really difficult to want to speak up because you don't know how it's going to be received. But through Knowledge and Power and through Douglas, I learned to advocate for myself and to speak up for my community um, because we're not well represented on campus. Um, I sit on the Vice Chancellor's Student Advisory Committee, um, and being the student body president for the School of Engineering, it's my main role to advocate for engineers, but I also advocate for indigenous people and for native voices on campus. Um, so I think Douglas really gives you the confidence and the ability to speak up for yourself. Um, because as women, a lot of times men speak over us. Um, but I think that, you know, inserting your voice into the conversation and really um, giving, um, like, as you said, the confidence to speak up is a really big part of being in Douglas. Um, and not only that, but also giving you the right people around you who will uplift you in that process, who will understand that it's really, really scary to raise your voice in the conversation, but like who will be there to support you in that is really important. I think something that helps me a lot is, I think similar to Katie, I am a proud member of the Chamorro group, which is from Guam. And I was one of the only AAPI people in my entire district. I'm from a very uh, traditional part of South Jersey. And coming to Douglas was one of the first experiences where I was not the only person of color in the room and I was not the only woman of color in the room. So I think for me, just having a place where I can rest almost and know that there are other people who are there to support me and that you know paving the way for marginalized people like myself doesn't just fall on me is something that really you can't get anywhere else. I feel like for me, um like philosophy, the philosophy department here is really, you know, well known, but honestly, it's really wild male in the industry. And when it comes to me and like, I can see the philosophers being sexist and misogynist and all of that. And I can be, you know, comfortable being, um, I have a question. Do you think that's right? <laughs> you know, but I feel like that's, uh, I feel like Douglas gave me that, voice and um, I also, I have my friend here, I go to her and I'm like, hey, like, this happened in my class, do you think that's a migration? And then she's like, yeah, and I'm, okay, next, tomorrow I'm gonna talk to him. But I feel like that's being a Douglas woman because you have the community and be like, hey, I feel like this, and do you agree? Or like, you know, I'm gonna be like, you know, kind of like, mm. But um, yeah, for sure. I feel like when it comes to departments like that, philosophy, um, engineering, engineering, and stuff like that, you need someone to be like, yeah, you're being, you know, attacked or like you're not being respected. And Douglas is the space for us when it comes to that. Yeah, I think everyone that has said something here, I definitely agree with that. Also, um, the Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Ambassador Program, which was run by Karina, who isn't here anymore, but um, she's wonderful, she was great. Um, yeah, she definitely taught us um, ways, because part of that program was that we learned for uh, to how to educate uh, people, especially the Douglas community, on different social justice topics. The next semester, we were um, giving presentations to Knowledge and Power students about these um, topics. And so part of that program, I think it was about, like, I definitely learned how to kind of cha channel my anger when it comes to certain um, situations, especially at Grace Hopper this year, seeing all those men um, kind of channel that and then try to find a productive way to use that. Um, not that our, our anger is most definitely justified. However, um, me just being angry isn't going to always help 
at least in this case. And so definitely asking the questions like, why are you saying this or why do you think this is okay? And um, having like a community of women, a community of people to kind of help um, understand our feelings when it comes to that and kind of help validate us, especially when in these spaces when we feel like, oh, um, it, was this actually right, like you had said. Um, definitely is helpful and I'm very thankful for that experience. Yeah, I, I would just um, piggyback on what all the ladies said. Um, I, I just, I, I, I'm reminded of the experience that I had in my Knowledge and Power class and my Knowledge and Power professor is here, Dr. D. Um, in that course, you do, um, you, you talk about a lot of topics and some of those topics can be a little, um, you could, be, you could feel a little uneasy talking about those topics. And I think that that course really helps you and prepares you for having uncomfortable conversations outside of the classroom. So, you know, you, will, you may have to have an uncomfortable conversation at work or, you know, with whoever, you know, and then like, you know, depending on how you were raised, I know for me, sometimes it's like, uh, hush, hush, you know, you don't need to say anything about it, but like a, a course like Knowledge and Power gives you the, um, gives you the fuel to speak up and it's not, and it, and it lets you know it's not a bad thing. And obviously you want to respect people, but obviously you don't want to take any disrespect from anyone. Um, but it just allowed, you know, for me, for myself and even like the, the rest of the students in the class, I think that it allowed us to really, you know, to help us navigate those uncomfortable conversations so that we can take that with us out in the real world. So speaking of out into the real world, <laughs> Douglas students and alumni have gone on to do incredibly amazing things. And I know when you and I all check back in in five years or 10 years or 20 years, you're going to be doing amazing things. I know this. I am 100% sure. So Virginia, I'll start with you and then we can kind of go down, but what's next? What are your dreams for your future? So many things. <laughs> um, so as uh, Dean Rayvon here mentioned earlier, I am in the articulated BA MPH program. So I'm already starting my master's in public health. And my end goal with that is to work for the New Jersey Health Department. I worked as an intern in DC this summer in the federal government, and I loved my experience, but I learned that state government is where I wanna be. There's so many things, especially relating to racism in healthcare and gender inequality in healthcare, reproductive healthcare that really are just we're better able to make change at the state level where there's less, there are fewer things in the way, there are fewer obstacles. And so my end goal is to work in the state health department, but really anything where I can be eliminating systemic obstacles to healthcare in any sense, whether that's physical healthcare, mental health care, anything like that is an accomplishment. You know, there's a few Douglas alumni we need to introduce you to. <laughs> just, just saying. Um, for me, I'm still a junior, so I haven't really thought of that far yet because I'm still like looking for an internship. <laughs> um, I, I, for me, I kind of really just want to be giving back in a sense. I feel like as of right now, like my past two years, I've gone a lot from Douglas. I want to kind of give back to like with my time, and that's why I'm a coach here at Douglas Church of Events. But I also want to just be in general at that point where I can like financially be able to support more things or I want to be able to start my own business or something like that. Just a plug, Trivita is running Yule Log this year. Why don't you tell us when it is? December 3rd. Right here. <laughs> you want to come back? Uh, for myself, so uh, currently I'm uh, I have a part-time internship at uh, J.P. Morgan and Equity Research, um, specifically in biotech, which is, um, I also have a love for healthcare. <laughs> um, and it's a little bit different kind of aspect to that, but um, I plan to do that. And um, I get to speak to companies about clinical trials and I get to see like the demographics. I know there's not a lot of research done on specific groups, African-Americans specifically. So I get to, I feel like that gives me a space to ask, you know, 
management teams directly, like, hey, what's going on on the field? Why don't we have this? Why don't we have you know, enough research on this um, for this demographic? Um, and then also, I see myself you know, really being involved with it being a Douglas alumni. I mean, I was just telling a, fram a family friend the other day like, how much Douglas has supported me, and I want to be able to be in position to do that for, for a future Douglas students. Well, we will absolutely find ways <laughs> to make that happen. Um, so for me, I guess, I want to be a lawyer. Um, I'm a senior, but I think I might take a gap year just because I want to find myself what I want to do. Um, I also want to, I had a dream last night, actually, I'm saying this, but I had a dream <laughs> last night, and I was like, oh, that's, I have to do that. Um, I want to empower women um, through movement. I don't know if that makes sense, like having like, like dance classes, but like, not like just to dance, but like how to express themselves through movement. Um, and so I'm thinking about that. But yeah, the goal is to be a lawyer and I want to work with uh, women and children. And so right now I'm studying for the LSAT. <laughs> oh, so midterms and LSAT. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> um, I, my future, I hope to work as an engineer in my future, hopefully after I graduate soon. Um, this past summer I was able, I was interning at Disney, which was a really cool experience, but um, as I was kind of going through that internship process and kind of just navigating the real world, um, I realized how much I really didn't know and um, how much I feel like I really needed multiple different mentors. And so after I graduate, especially once I'm working in the industry, whether either at the company I'm at, and especially at Douglas, I hope to maybe potentially start like mentorship programs or like at least advocate for more women to, or like get a group of women who've already been in the industry and kind of really uh, talk about their experiences, especially in going through the getting the job part, the things that you need to know, the networking, there's so much that they don't necessarily teach you at school. And there's just so much that people just seem to know, especially men, which kind of sucks. <laughs> but um, we kind of may have to make up for that, and so yeah. Yeah, I love this question because I'm currently doing PhD program application, so that's all I'm thinking about. Um, so I completed two internships in Washington, D.C. throughout my time here, um, and a lot of you are probably saying you're an engineer, what the heck are you doing in Washington, D.C.? Um, so my sophomore year, going into my junior year, I interned at Merck as an animal health public policy and government relations intern, um, and then this past summer I interned at the White House in the Office of Science and Technology Policy, um, oh, and I actually wow. found a Douglas alum at the White House that I was yes. able to talk to. Yes. Um, if any There's of you, more than one. If any of you are familiar with the New Jersey Gov Twitter account and how iconic that is, Megan Coyne is the one who used to run that and now she works at the White House in the Office of Digital Strategy. Um, so I was able to connect with her. Um, and I feel like my opportunities in DC really shape my perspective of how we can take a more holistic look at how science impacts people. So right now I'm applying to PhD programs, more in the social behavioral sciences, public health space, um, health infrastructures and learning systems, health organizations and policy. Um, so I'll complete my PhD and then hopefully work in policy in some respect, um, advocating for indigenous and tribal health care. There is a program called the AAAS Fellowship, the American Association for the Advancement of Science that promotes um, people who are scientists by trade to work in policy. Um, so I interned at Office of Science and Technology Policy at the White House this summer, and the dream is to go back um, to the Office of Science and Technology Policy to be the policy advisor on indigenous knowledge in that office um, to really work, how, work out how we can use traditional ecological knowledge um, to turn that into um, policy and academic excellence. And then she's gonna be an internship <laughs> site host for <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. students. <laughs> I mean, so again, varied experiences, but, but you have similar perspectives. So this will be the last, last question. But you know, what is it, what would you say to a prospective student now about the Douglas community and, and why does it matter next? Why does it matter for the next generation of students that are coming in? This is my favorite question. I'm the co-chair of Douglas Student Recruitment Network, so this is my whole job, is getting prospective students to make the choice and come to Douglas. 
I think personally, professionally, academically, Douglas is just such an incredible experience because as we've heard from all of our incredible panelists, there is something for everyone and there is something that appeals to every intersection. So I know some people have mentioned science and politics, some people have mentioned you know, arts and research, which at every other school I looked at was not something that existed. And so I think one of the things that I would tell a prospective student is Douglas is going to help you not just as a student, but as a person, because it's such a well-rounded community and program that you really, can't walk away the same person that you entered because there's so many ways to keep learning and growing and you know just forming your identity and learning about your identity and your perspective on the world that it truly will change your life like it's not a cliche it actually will change your life so when I think about Douglas, like I've wrangled with this thought. I think of like when you first enter college, you're given like this lock box with like your potential in there. And I feel like for me, Douglas was like kind of like that key to unlock it. Um, for me, it was just like mainly like getting involved. Um, Douglas traditional events, it's nothing related to my major at all. And I still like enjoy it so much. And I feel like, um, it just gives me like, Douglas just like gives me like a lot of opportunity and I feel like being active, being engaged, you just gain so much out of it when, like, when you're in the community. Yeah, I would, I would agree. Um, <laughs> um, I would say to a prospective student, join as fast as you can. I mean, being a student, like one student on a huge campus is so overwhelming. And having Douglas to run to, like it's like Douglas has their arms open and you're just waiting for you to come. And it's like, I don't know something or I need help with something. I have multiple people from the Douglas College that I can email really quickly, even have cell phone numbers um, to help me out and give me an answer. And you know, being on, like I said, being on, on a college campus, sometimes you're just, you may spend a few days, maybe possibly weeks spinning your wheels like, I don't know what to do in this situation. Um, and so, and I think, and I feel that that would have been me if I didn't have the Douglas College. So I'm grateful for that. And I would tell any prospective student, like, listen. And also, just like the lady said, it caters to everything. Personal, you know, extracurricular, maybe that has nothing to do with your major or your minor, but it's something that you're genuinely interested in. Douglas offers that, you know, being a part of different organizations. crazy but it's also so interesting how now I'm a mentor and then every time I go to any event and I'm like you need to go to Douglas like to like even my friend I'm like you need to become a Douglas woman and I feel like because I was a mentor I had the opportunity to really like learn what was Douglas and all the opportunities that we that Douglas offer and then like when I go to the events and then I see my mentees and they're like oh my god Rachel thank you so much for telling me about Douglas, that makes me so happy. So I honestly, I would just say, join Douglas and you're gonna have that shoulder that you need to like, you know, like to lay on and like cry on because Rutgers is a big university and it's really overwhelming, but Douglas is always there. And also when you're a Douglas woman, you're always a Douglas woman, like always. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. No, yeah, going off of every, what everyone else said, uh, Douglas is definitely my safe space. Um, when I first, my year, when I, it was COVID, and so I didn't make many friends, and I'm also in commuters, so I was never really on campus. So all my friends have been through Douglas. All my current friends are Douglas members. And even now, like I tell my sister's friends, my sister's not here, but her friends are here. And I just keep telling them every time I see them on campus, <laughs> join Douglas, join Douglas. Um, but yeah, it's an, it's an incredible 
the opportunity to be a part of Douglas and just the number of opportunities that I wouldn't have been able to pursue and the things that I've learned without Douglas if I would just part of Rutgers. Rutgers is a huge school. It's, get, it's really easy to get lost and kind of not know what's happening or feel very lost and so I'm very thankful and I always push people to come to Douglas because it's so great and everyone's so great, everyone's so helpful. I love it so much here. <laughs> Yeah, I think for me, I would just say that like every aspect of what you do in Douglas has a positive impact on your future. Um, I found my White House internship through a LinkedIn post of someone that I connected with at a Plen conference that was funded by Douglas, the Public Leadership Education Network. I found my community through the Living Learning Community. I've done four years of undergraduate research through Douglas and Project Super, and now that I'm applying to PhD programs, I can talk about my four years of research, which is really unique. Um, I am also currently like the third in like three of female engineering presidents in the past three years, and every single one of them was a Douglas woman like there are so many women on this campus that are making impacts and like being surrounded by that will just uplift you for the future um there's just so much power in being a Douglas woman and like when you run into someone in like the real world <laughs> and you, you see their Douglas woman there's just this instant connection um because as she said like we're we're Douglas women for life so like that not only the connection here but the connection outside of these doors um and outside of Douglas campus is just like unmatched Douglas is unmatched <laughs> Douglas is unmatched. <laughs> I want to I want to thank all of you for joining me today for spending so much time, you know, having this conversation. Uh, I, you know, you you will be Douglas forever. So stay in touch when you do graduate whether that's this May next May, another May. I don't know how long the MPH program is, but um, I just want to thank you again. And, and I will let all of you know, we didn't handpick these students. I mean, they're amazing. They are part of our community, and every other Douglas student that you talk to is equally as amazing. I have never had an experience where I sat down with a Douglas student and was not blown away by what they're doing, by how they think about the world, by how they engage with the world, and by their really um, just intense desire to make a difference in the future. So thank you again. You are amazing people, and we're so proud to have you as part of our community. Thank you.